Yo, what's up? This is Cameron Brand. So, last week I did a story for WRT for the radio show, uh, WRT's 6 p.m. local news uh, about this Rastafari church that opened up in Madison. Um, it's actually opened up about a year ago, and then a few months ago moved to a new location on Mifflin Street, which is a really popular area for college students to live, kind of more known as like the party neighborhood. <clears throat> But yeah, since then, the church has blown up because, so what they do is, uh, you become a member of the church, and then you can donate to it, and in return receive gifts such as cannabis, which is, you know, a sacrament in the Rastafari religion, so you can get your prayer on. And so yeah, basically, uh, the church has been growing, a lot of people are stopping by to pick up their sacrament and get their prayer on. Uh, with cannabis products. They've also got like THC edibles and THC infused drinks. Well, yeah, so I sat down with Ross Jesse, uh, who's the guy that started the church and got the scoop on what the situation is, uh, you know, what Rastafari is about, um, but also the situation with the city because in Wisconsin, marijuana is not uh, legal recreationally or medically. And, well, it, there are actually, you know, things like on the table. We've got a uh, governor who's trying to work on some sort of legalization or at least decriminalization. Um, but, yeah, currently remains illegal. And the city is trying to shut this down. So, uh, and I talk about that all with him. That's kind of how the interview starts. So I start this off by interviewing a couple of people waiting outside. The morning I went there to meet with Ross Jesse. So first we talked to Adier Laviega, and then a guy named Sean who's been actually practicing Rastafari. It's like my first time being here, and um, we kind of just wanted to, to check it out to see if like if you actually like can buy or stuff so yeah we just want to see like the legitness about it so I want to see I want to see how far it goes and I I'll just really see I really hope it's legit <laughs> yeah all right man well, cool thank, thank you. you I appreciate it um so far I've really enjoyed like their message um specifically I, I so I grew up a Catholic and um I really kind of like their traditionalist like teachings when it comes to um, religion and like Jesus and everything. I like how it's kind of like not quite like um, it's almost like it takes like a lot from Judaism and sort of like the traditional um, ideas about God um, from the Abra Abrahamic religions. So um, that's kind of why I really kind of got interested in it at first. It wasn't um, so much like the cannabis that most people kind of, at least most people around here, kind of like drawn towards it for. Um, is more so for the spiritual aspect of it and also I really enjoy like the more community aspect of it um, of the religion itself just yeah. like the idea of like getting together with a group of folks and praying in more of an informal setting or it's not as like intimidating as being in like the Catholic Church when I which I grew up in I've worshipped with some some friends of mine that are Rastafari um, so they've been like really trying to like teach me the ways of it and everything and then once the church opened up I figured I might as well join and become a member but um, yeah I really haven't heard much about like events or anything yet I mean I only joined the church um, last week so um, but like I've been practicing or starting to learn how to practice um, at least the past couple months now. Yeah, do you think the cannabis is like an essential element to it? Definitely, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it really helps to bring folks closer to God, um, helps you communicate, um, and also helps you to kind of bring God out to, to everybody as a thing. Because the thing is, is you really do it as like a group, you know? Um, and that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's what I like about it, is that it kind of brings everybody back um, down to earth and, in a way, but also lifts us all up at the same time that kind of makes sense yeah um are you aware that the city is right now like trying to crack down on yeah the operation here yeah definitely aware of that yeah for yeah. sure do you think uh i don't know i mean it sounds like they're kind of going back and forth right now but trying to work it out diplomatically is what was ross jesse's words but i guess do you have any concern about that 
Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is that, you know, the freedom of religion is, um, it's an essential right here in the United States, right? I mean, that's, that's part of freedom. It's part of the fabric of American society. Um, if you can't practice your religions, you know, regardless of whether or not they use maybe what some consider illicit substances, um, you know, that's not, that's not freedom right there. I think it's really infringing upon folks' rights. Um, and plus, they are, they are protected by the Constitution. Um, especially, I think it was a court case in the late 80s, um, a Native American man had sued the federal government because they had uh, taken away his peyote, um, and he uses it for their ceremonies as well. So I think, um, yeah, I think it's just kind of wrong, and it's not really what America is, it's not what Wisconsin is, you know. We're about freedom and moving forward, and I don't think we can really do that if we're cracking down on folks. March 26th, Madison police came uh, in response to a noise complaint and ended up coming back and seizing about five ounces of marijuana and various uh, paraphernalia. And <clears throat> Ross Jesse live streamed the end of the incident on Facebook. So I'll play that here and I'll also show the uh, documents that the landlord and Ross Jesse received from the city attorney and res uh, following this. So you guys want only the marijuana. And so I'm just, your edibles. So as it is, we're just saying once again, we don't consent to you touch, <laughs> taking or touching our religious property or our religious symbolisms from yep. the places that they are. Mm -hmm. uh, you're doing it against our consent. We wish for them to be returned immediately. Uh, we require them to be returned to us immediately. So as it is, we don't hate you guys. We know you're just people like us, but uh, it is what it is as well. Trying, trying to exercise our rights within the reason. So, by the way, uh, they're supposed to be, according to your own your own constitution, there's supposed to be no burden, no burden placed on someone exercising their religion. And I do want to inform you that this is a burden, but I do respect you as human beings once yeah, again. I understand what you're saying, and I'm just I'm just saying from our point of view, we got to get the paperwork to verify all that. And we're not, like I said, arresting you guys or doing anything other than seizing. Right. I respect what's you guys, your people. Legal right still. now in the state of Wisconsin and federally, and then we'll go from there, okay? So we can come talk tomorrow. Uh, you're going to leave us a contact, you said? Yep, we're going to leave you a lieutenant, uh, detective sergeant. If you want, you can just dump, you can dump that one into the other one if you want, or whatever. Yeah, we'll just put it in a bag. You guys can save the top. But uh, I don't wish for you to take it, but if you want to dump it together, I'd like that to happen. This is a violation of constitutional rights, but we'll talk about that at some point, I hope. I, I don't understand. About that right now. I don't understand, but I'm gonna tell you. I don't understand. It's it's a clear it's a clear burden on us. When can we get uh, when can we talk to somebody about this tomorrow? And you said you got a case number you wrote down. Yep, I got you. I gotta go to my car, write down a case number. We'll get you the phone number you guys need, and then when it's determined with the paperwork what you had signed or approved or whatever then we'll kind of go forward. But right now we don't have that documentation. The city attorney, people I've spoken to are saying that we're gonna just seize it for now. We need to look at the paperwork. We need to get all your documentation together. We'll go from there. If it's yours and it's legal and it's you've done all the things you need to do, that's up to them and they'll return it to you if it's within your parameters, okay? So it's just seized at this point. Okay. I don't agree with seized. I agree that uh, I would say it's being unlawfully taken from us, okay. but we'll talk about that with the people yeah, that. You can, you can, you can say it, you want to say it, okay? Uh, well, thanks for being uh, being friendly people at least yep. in terms of. Uh, I will come back with a case number and the appropriate phone number of uh, somebody above me who I've spoken to, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna please show up here. Yep, so on that day, 
So you were uh, having a speaker, a boom speaker, wonder boom speaker, it was outside, this one here. And we were playing some tunes and uh, it was reported that somebody wasn't happy with our music that was playing outside. So the police stopped by on a noise complaint. They asked us to uh, keep the music down if we're going to have our speaker outside. So that was fine. And they only were here for a second or two, literally. And he was like, okay, and then he's out of here, he left. So then they kind of lingered around for uh, about 10, 15 minutes. And they started like looking at our windows and stuff. And then they're like, what? They uh, came back over and they're asking me. They, they went to the door and they knocked. So I went down there, the door's locked. So I uh, unlatched the door and opened it and asked them, what's up? What do they want? And then. They said that uh, they want to know about all this THC edibles and different weed leaf, THC leaf and stuff like that, cannabis leaf in my window and all that. So I'm explaining to them that we have this church and religious use and we've been open for a year. And then she asked me, the officer lady asked me if she could see my uh, lease to show that we have a right to be in the building. And I said, yeah, I would get it. And then I stepped away from the door and as I left the door, turned my back, she held the door open. And then uh, by the time I got back with my lease, her and another officer, they had walked in my place without an invitation. So then they were in here without a warrant uh, on a call that was related to a noise complaint. When they got in here, they started asking me more questions. I gave them the same answers, showed them some paperwork that was, uh, some of it was on my phone, didn't have a physical copy. And they're saying they need a physical copy. And uh, they were calling all around the city to see what they should do. They're calling the city attorney and the state and all the different police chief, whoever they were calling to see what they should do. So ultimately, they were told not to charge or arrest anybody. And uh, Do you know who made that call? I don't know who made that call. But somebody did after about an hour. And then, yeah. uh, and then they uh, somebody also told them that they, uh, that they should seize any cannabis that they saw in visible sight where they were standing, but not search anything or take anything else. So we had, so we had uh, from there, three ounces of shake, straight shake like this. And we had another half ounce of CBD bud. And then we had uh, about an ounce and a half or, or two of uh, stems and stuff that ran through the volcano vaporizer so it was already didn't have anything left in it and then uh, aside from that about one and a half ounces of actual real THC bud that was bagged up into little baggies 20s I'd call it like a two gram baggie and, uh, and so they uh, took those things and then that's when I started to record them after about 45 minutes when they were doing that. And then I told them they're taking our religious property and symbols without our consent. And I require them to return it. And then uh, that's how that part came on the video, just so I would have a documentation of, of me telling them that in face-to-face -face so that that could never be denied. So now, no arrests, no charges have come from that, uh, but they haven't returned our property and they've continued to harass our landlady. So now I filed an injunction against them, a restraining order injunction against the police and the city attorney's office and the attorneys and those people that are participating in that harassment. And, and so um, I filed that and now it's in the, in the process of uh, working its way to them. So have you heard from the landlord? Yeah, yeah I try to be supportive. Uh, oh, she's, she's supportive, but she's also scared because it's something that's not familiar to her and it's causing her grief and it's yeah. causing us unnecessary uncertainty and things uh it looks like the did the city they they told the city told your landlord that they should evict you so uh, something along those lines that uh, they're trying to take her building from her if uh, she keeps renting to us do you guys have a lawyer uh, we're, doing everything, we're doing everything uh, independently, without a lawyer, but with uh, lawful counsel and lawful expertise as well. So, All right. 
Um, I guess, do you guys have a, like, you filed the injunction, you're waiting on that to be, like, approved or cleared? Or? Yep, so that one, uh, I made a procedural error, so I had to um, amend it. So now it's being amended, and uh, we're sending it back out, and that'll probably be all uh, straight by today or tomorrow. So I just messaged Ross Jesse to get the latest on that, and apparently the city has been served with a federal lawsuit. And he says the landlord must choose sides. I asked him how they're feeling. He says pressured and bothered, uncomfortable, scared. Uh, they were served as of yesterday. Today is April 30th. I guess I don't know, how are you feeling about it? Are you worried? You feeling pretty good? Oh, I know for sure it was, uh, they have no chance, not even and not even a percentage of, of, a, of a chance, nothing. We're, we're 100%. I guess, let me just ask you, like, what is Rastafari in your, you know, from your perspective? Uh, Rastafari is a way of life, and that's been mm, described as a culture, uh, because it's a way of life, and culture is what ultimately makes religion, religious acts, religious repetition, of cultural things, that's what uh, what it is. So Rastafari is an, identi an identity related to a culture uh, and a clean culture that relates to uh, divine law from the Bible um, relating to King David and King Solomon and the blessing that was passed on to King Solomon's firstborn son, uh, the King of Israel. And so, we try to follow it in a form of spiritual, spiritual faith. I think religion is a word that people have like used to, to label it, for lack of a better word. It's also a movement, uh, it's a language, it's a heritage. Uh, so all of those things, it's a, you know, a liberated, liberating movement of people with good intentions trying to uh, uphold their freedoms and their rights. So how did you first get into Rastafari life? What? Uh, so I was always raised studying the Bible. And uh, so I've been reading the Bible since my childhood and then when I became an adult, I started to research it more. Uh, I also had my experience with cannabis at that time which opened up my mind to uh, different spiritual reasoning to form my identity. And then from there I started to take a big interest in my study and I would travel to different places like Jamaica and even Kenya more than a dozen times each to gain hands-on experience and insight and reasoning and education about what Rastafari is really, and then after that time, you know, it's been about 20 years now since I've been doing that, and I've just uh, applied all those lessons to myself to bring this about. Uh, can you talk about what other practices, like, and like, is cannabis the main kind of practice of Rastafari? Or? So cannabis is, uh, like we religiously use this to enhance and uh, bring forth the experience of the breaking bread, the fellowship, uh, like the hiring of the spirit, the mind, and the body with, uh, with our, with our uh, fellowship of people. So the cannabis is something like a tool, it's a sacrament. The word sacrament means sacred mental, sacred mental. So that's where the word comes from. And uh, so we try to keep that in mind when we do it. You come in here, you're talking about the literature. People have got the, you've got the books right here. So, and that's also people can make a donation and yeah. pick out one of these books on. Huh? Yep, the Queen of Sheba story and uh, Solomon and Menelik. That story is foundational. It tells the, the, whole, the whole foundation of where Rastafari connects to the Bible. And then the other books are some wise words from Rastafari himself, also known as Haley Selassie. And then we have the other here, the book of Enoch, which is uh, preserved 
only in the Ethiopian language in its full book and we have that language translated. It's part of the original church and all the Orthodox churches and it was part of the original King James uh, but it was subsequently removed after a couple hundred years by the Catholics. Yeah, so um, I was just having a chance to talk to a friend and he was telling me that like, because I was like talking to him, I'm like, is there anything even else like this? Is this just like a Madison thing? And he was like, no, there's uh, churches like this popping up other places in the country. So is this like part of a sect in the U.S. Um, or is it affiliated with any other Rastafari churches? No, I'm not affiliated with any other ones other than to say that uh, the idea of Rastafari is bigger than our church and there's many people worldwide that uh, are members or we're, we're all part of the same unit whether they have a membership or not we have the same overstanding so even if we've never met but our church is just one doorway for people to access yeah so uh do you think it's a movement that's growing right now what's that do you think it's a movement that's growing currently yeah we're uh, growing at an exponential rate we got probably ten thousand members uh including international and city and statewide hello so, ready? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I just got one more here. Like, I kind of want to jump back to like the situation with the city right now. Yeah. And like the the they sent me the letters that they sent you and the landlord here, and it's like the, just reading through it. It doesn't seem like they're taking the religious component at all serious. Yeah, I mean they're taking it serious enough that I can go do a jail visit as a uh, as a clergy person. Right now, I can go do jail visits, and so is Dylan. Oh, yeah. So they know they know what time it is, and uh, all this other stuff is just a bluff and a harassment that they're gonna it's gonna make them liable for participating in. Yeah. Well, and so I talked to uh, a guy that was here earlier outside, mm -hmm. um, Sean, and like he was telling me that he sees it is uh, well. He he said he's like actually been really getting into the religion and, and like met a group of people that they've been uh, you know, using the sacrament and worshiping and he's like pretty much adopted Rastafari as like a deals yeah but and then he said he feels like the actions of the city right now are un-American so like yeah I mean I guess I'm just kind of like saying the same thing again but like I mean I don't know, do you think that, that like the city needs to like recognize it more, the whole side of it, and that like how essential the cannabis is to it for people like Sean? Yeah, there's two parts of it. One of it is uh, their disrespect toward us as a religious group, and then the second is like their disrespect toward the cannabis community as a whole that uh, uses it for a variety of reasons that are all helping them or positive. And so they don't, they don't uh, regard either one of those communities or ideals. So they're not uh, people that we acknowledge either. They're, they're not in our jurisdiction. They don't have any authority over a man and a woman to exercise their liberty and their rights. So in the end, uh, their games will cause them to be liable for them. So. I think that's all I've got, unless you have anything you want to add, but... All right, brother, I appreciate you. Uh, the only thing here is uh, if I would add anything, it's just uh, everybody should know that we're all denominational. Anybody can come here, and so we don't preach to you. We just break bread together, and we don't stand up in robes and wave our finger around and try to do a call and response audience thing like that. It's very simple. We break bread together. If you don't have a good enough spirit to uh, involve yourself in that, and break bread with us, it's hard to uh, get to anything uh, more significant, but that's where we try to start and open the door for people. So, all um, right, all right, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. All right, so that was my interview with Ross Jesse from Lion of Judah Rastafari Church here in Madison, Wisconsin. All right, well, thanks for watching. Peace.